Manitoba has one of the highest rates of multiple sclerosis in the world. Indeed, throughout Canada, according to the MS Society's website, 12 people a day are diagnosed with the disease, and currently an estimated 90,000 Canadians are living with multiple sclerosis. In this month of May, the MS Society runs a number of initiatives to mark the month as being Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month culminating in May 30th, which is World MS Day, a day that was initiated in 2009, whose objective is to unify individuals and organizations from around the world to raise awareness and move us closer to a world free of MS. Throughout this month, the MS Society is holding a couple of big events to help raise money and awareness of the disease. They are currently running an event called the May 50K that is encouraging people to get out and run, walk, or roll 50K for MS research. The other big event is the MS Walk, which this year is happening on Sunday, May 26th at Kildonan Park. And judging and joining me here in the Classic 107 studio to talk about May being MS Awareness Month and the fundraising initiative that are happening. I am joined by Andrea McCullough, who is the Director of Community Engagement for the MS Society of Canada here in Winnipeg. Hi, Andrea. Nice to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we get started, I'm just going to put it out there on Front Street. I myself have MS. I was diagnosed with relapsing remitting MS back in 2009. So this is obviously a subject that I'm interested in. Before we talk about the events, can you give a brief explanation about what MS is? Yeah, for sure. And thank you for sharing your connection to MS. I've, I've noticed over the years when people uh, find out that I work for MS Canada, the first thing they do is share that connection. So mm. you'd be surprised at how many are out there. Uh, but So MS is a disease of the central nervous system. So it affects the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerves. Um, it's an episodic disease, which means that, you know, this, the, the severity of the symptoms can vary throughout, throughout your progression or your, your journey with the disease. And it can also be progressive. So it can get worse over time. Mm -hmm. um, what's tricky about MS is it's very unique person to person. So yeah. it presents differently, um, you know, it, and it can be difficult to diagnose in that, in that way. Um, so but some common symptoms include, you know, extreme fatigue. So this isn't, uh, I stayed up a little bit too late, so I'm feeling a bit tired. This is really debilitating fatigue that can affect, you know, um, your whole life, really. It can affect your mobility and your balance. Your cognitive function can be affected. Um, it's very unpredictable, which can make it uh, difficult to manage when you're living with this disease, as I'm sure you know, because you yeah. don't always know uh, what each day will bring. Um, so its effects can be emotional, physical, mm -hmm. uh, and financial at times. Yeah, totally. totally. Uh, and for our listeners out there, uh, just to get it sort of more into the mechanisms uh, of the disease, uh, when I explain it to friends who wonder what it is, I always explain it. It's like the nerves are surrounded by this myelin sheath. It looks like a sausage, a uh, roll of sausages. And what happens is the immune system actually attacks the myelin sheath that covers the nerve the nerves and it creates a short circuit. It's a bit like having a, a electrical wire where that isn't covered and it just, it, it short circuits and it mm -hmm. shows up on the MRI's uh, white lesion mm -hmm. or sclerosis, which means scarring. So it like, yeah, the demyelination is there and it shows up as a, as a scar on, on, on MRIs. And it's perhaps one of the reasons why it affects everybody differently because it's affecting different parts of the brain, right? Yeah, for sure. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. a great way to describe it. It interrupts that message from the brain to the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. it's, it's not only the brain, it's also uh, the spinal cord as well, right? Mm -hmm. Cause the, mm -hmm. this, then obviously the nerves run down the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is more than one kind of MS. Can you talk about the difference between relapsing remitting MS and primary progressive uh, strain of the disease? Sure, yeah. So the relapsing remitting uh, MS, this is, you know, 90% of people are diagnosed with this, this type, and it's characterized by clearly defined attacks and periods of remission. So, you know, you can have times where you're feeling pretty okay and you can go about your day and then, you know, times when you're not. So, so that can be difficult to manage. And, you know, primary progressive MS is, is when there's a, a continuous worsening of symptoms. So mm -hmm. it, it continues get, to get worse over time. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, yes, uh, you have these relapses where you get a flare up where something doesn't work. And, yeah. then, and, then, it, and then it comes back for relapsing, remitting patients. And then for primary progressive, it's just 
just continues. It just continues. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, thankfully, there are disease-modifying therapies that exist today. Uh, over the past few years, there are more f- pill forms of uh, the medications as opposed to taking injections like I used to do. I used to hate it because it was reminded me that I had the, had the disease. Uh, the MS Society can help people or provide people with a direction on disease-modifying therapies that might work for them, right? Absolutely. You know, our, I mean, the best decision is always made with your healthcare team, for sure, on which treatment you decide to, to take. But um, our, our, our knowledge network and our MS navigators are great resources to talk you through the different options that are out there and really break it down for you. So, so definitely a first step would be our MS Knowledge Network. Our website is also a great resource, too, at mscanada.ca. Mm-hmm. So May is MS Awareness Month. How long has the MS Society been observing it? Yeah, no, we've been doing MS Awareness Month for a long time. So it's uh, it's a really busy month for MS Canada, but also for our volunteers, our community members, and our fundraisers. Uh, really important to raise awareness of what MS is, but, you know, also how people can support and how they can get involved. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you've got, uh, aside from the 50K, uh, and which we'll get to in a minute, and the walk. Uh, how else is the MS Society marking MS Month? Well, there's so much going on. So, you know, we just had a group of volunteers um, uh, at Day on the Hill uh, in Ottawa meeting with, with representatives from our government um, to really, you know, put forward the priorities of MS Canada and advocate for people living with MS. Um, we have, uh, there's some grassroots advocacy pieces that are happening across the country where volunteers are going out in their community. They're connecting with their local governments to have May proclaimed as MS Awareness Month. Some are flying the MS Canada flag mm-hmm. outside of their, their local uh, buildings um, and also getting monuments lit up in red. So, you know, really exciting things happening across the country. That's fantastic. Okay, so we've got the May 50K, which has just started. Uh, can you explain exactly what the event is and how is money raised? Yeah, so I signed up for May 50K. I did my little uh, quick jog, slow jog this morning <laughs> to get started. Uh, but what it is, is it's a challenge issued to Canadians to walk, run, roll, or bike, really whatever movement is accessible to you. Just get out there and do it on and up to 50 kilometers during the month of May. So it's a fundraising event, a pledge-based fundraising event. So, you know, uh, and, and really the, the online fundraising platform has come so far and it makes it so easy to do. To, you can a- ask for donations through email, through um, you know, there's links you can share out on your social media channels. It's it's quite easy to do. So, uh, so you're essentially getting pledgers to su- support you in in getting achieving the 50k. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, my understanding is that you can register at any time during the month of May. It's not too late to register. One question I have though is, how do you log the kilometers that you've done? Yeah, so you can register at any time. It's themay50k.ca, and it's so easy to log your kilometers. You can um, log in online on your on your computer, or you can do it um, through an app on your phone, where if you have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch like I do, you can just sync the two, and it'll automatically track it for you. So really easy. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the 50K is one fundraising event. The other one uh, that I know and I've taken part in in a number of times is the MS Walk. Uh, How long has a walk been taking place? So this will be the 32nd year in Winnipeg. So, you know, one of MS Canada's key fundraising events and such an important one, too, because um, it is a fundraising event for sure, but it's also a really great community building event. Um, You know, we hear from people all the time that one of the first things they did when they were diagnosed was sign up for MS Walk. And to see, you know, that crowd of people that's all there for the same reasons, it's um, pretty powerful to see. So. Mm-hmm. And then, like I say, I've, I've been there. There's a real party atmosphere, yeah. um, especially at the beginning before the walk uh, kicks off. What can people expect this year? Uh, and it's taking place at Kildonan Park. Can you talk a little bit about the route? Yeah, sure. So this is the second year at Kildonan Park. It's a beautiful park um, in Winnipeg. Uh, the route is four kilometers, so it's a 2K loop that you do twice, but, you know, if 2K is what you're feeling like doing that day, that's okay to do that, too. Um, and it's just a really great way to spend a Sunday Sunday morning. It starts at 10 a.m. Um, you know, we're expecting about 600 people to show up. Uh, it's a really lovely, lovely way to spend the day. Mm-hmm. And again, it's a pledge-driven uh, fundraiser. Uh, what's the financial goal this year? Uh, so we're hoping to raise 224000 here in Winnipeg and $4 million across Canada. 
any specific reason why 224? It or? is not <laughs> Not 225? <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's just a percentage increase over last year. But, you know, maybe we'll take it to 225. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Uh, again, uh, you can register as an individual uh, or a team. Uh, can you talk about some of the prizes people can win based on the amounts raised? Sure, yeah. There's there's a new um, incentive this year that's that's uh, not a prize. It's um, an I Have MS shirt. So if you're at the point in your journey where you're able to talk about living with MS, um, you can go and get one of those at the walk and and really connect with everybody that way. Um, But there are different fundraising levels. So you can get a t-shirt, there's a cooler bag and a Bluetooth speaker this year. So lots of different incentives for the different fundraising levels. Fantastic. Uh, One of the things I've often wondered about is uh, how is the money that's raised Use. Can you talk a little bit how, about how the MS Society makes use of the money? Yeah, for sure. It's an important question. So, you know, a, a big priority for the organization is investing in MS research. So we've invested over $218 million over the years in, in MS research. Um, but it's also really important to support the person living with MS and their surrounding circle. Um, so we have a variety of different programs. I did touch on our MS Knowledge Network already, but I love talking about that program because it's such a great resource for people affected by MS. Um, you know, it's staffed by our MS navigators that live across the country in different communities. Um, it's available in both official languages. And you can pick up the phone, you can call them, you can send an email, you can chat on our website. Um, really accessible. And they're just such great experts and a resource on, on living life with MS. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have wellness programs that are available online, um, which include, you know, of that physical activity component, but most also have an opportunity for connection after the fact, too. So yeah. really those both sides of wellness that are so important. Um, and of course, you know, our peer support groups. So yeah. we have different groups that meet across the country because, you know, sometimes you just need to talk to somebody who's been there and can really mm-hmm. understand what you're, what you're going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, this has just been great. I'm going to wrap up the conversation by asking, where can people go specifically uh, to get m- uh, more details? And for our listeners out there, those support groups that you talked about, for me, when I was first diagnosed, proved to be immensely mm-hmm. helpful. So um, yeah. can you just restate where, where people can go? Yeah, our MS Knowledge Network at mscanada.ca is really the best place to go for any information about life with MS. So they can connect you to different groups that are meeting in your area. Um, you know, there are some that meet online as well, if that's preferred. Um, and they can just really connect you to to whatever we offer as an organization and different resources in your community. We also have a new um, education session that happens monthly, and it's it's called MS 101, and it's a really great resource. We've we've received some really great feedback about it. It's um, you know, a mix of people with lived experience and MS Canada staff just giving, you know, a basic education session on what MS is. Mm. And it's not recorded and there's, you know, the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so that's been a really great resource for people facing a diagnosis. Fantastic. And for our Classic 107 listeners, I've embedded a direct link to that site, which in the article that you can find at classic107.com. Andrea, this has just been great talking all things MS and the fact that May is MS Awareness Month. Hopefully, this May's fundraisers will be big successes, and hopefully there will be more advances in MS research. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by and talk to me today. This has just been really great. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be here.